On this occasion, we will explore the foundations of pre-Hispanic cultures in relation to the phenomenon of equinoxes and their context. For decades, many people have been joined to the main archaeological sites on the spring equinox, March 21, to recharge their energy. But the truth is that the majority has no idea about what is behind these types of phenomena. For lovers of good vibes, the little that is achieved on those days is getting a good sunburn. It is necessary to strip this phenomena of everything that has nothing to do with the pre-Hispanic past. Starting with the word equinox itself, which is a Latin word that means equal night. Therefore, no ancient culture in this continent called it the spring equinox. Well, we can justify that, as that's what we call it today. But sometimes this mistake is made by products that supposedly seek to revalue the pre-Hispanic past, like the Crunchyroll animated series called Onyx Equinox, where neither of those two words has nothing to do with the original context. The next thing to highlight and demystify is the time at which they supposedly conduct their ceremonies, usually at noon on March 21. This is a completely incorrect situation because an equinox is the astronomical moment when the air and the sun are aligned. It occurs when both Earth's hemispheres are equally illuminated by the sun, with the imaginary line of the equator aligning as seen in the image. Therefore, discussively during the equinox, day and night have the same duration. But this almost never occurs in the New Age goods based beliefs at noon because the alignment can occur either during the day or at night. For example, this year, 2023, the Institute of Astronomy of the National Autonomous University of Mexico reported that the spring equinox took place on March 20 at 3 24 p.m. Central Mexico time, not during their noon ceremonies. The alignment of the Earth Sun phenomenon has no relation to the events organized at noon. And the other lie is in the belief that the phenomenon always occurs on March 21 each year in the northern hemisphere where Mexico is located. In the Northern Hemisphere, the spring equinox can occur on March 19, 20 or 21, depending on the year, and the fall equinox on September 22 or 23. In the Southern Hemisphere, these events occur in the same dates, but vice versa. When Mexico celebrates the spring equinox, it's autumn in the southern part of the planet, and vice versa. This leads to another falsehood in these matters. Everyone celebrates the spring equinox, but no one stops at archaeological sites to celebrate the fall equinox. Both astronomical phenomena would be equally important, in theory. In conclusion, all of this is modern folklore, but what was it like more than 500 years ago? They didn't call them equinoxes, zenith passages, or salty says at all. Each culture, in its own language, would have given its own name to each such event. This phenomena represents six moments of alignment throughout the solar year of 365 days, used today to mark the seasons of spring, summer, fall and winter. Obviously, during the equinoxes the sun rises in the east, center on the horizon's visual. For the northern hemisphere, the summer and winter solstices occur in winter between December 21 and 22 and in summer between June 20 and 21. 
When considering the imaginary line mark, by the solstices the sun rises in the middle. In the past, all these astronomical moments were perfectly regulated and contemplated influencing various civilizations, starting with the planning of their settlements. To better understand this and many more aspects, a new concept for this time comes into play, called Archaeoastronomy. Today, Archaeoastronomy conducts the study of the orientations of monuments, buildings and archaeological pyramid bases, and their possible relationship with different celestial bodies or events. Archaeoastronomy has discovered, in the absence of the original sources that were the inhabitants of these cities, that countless platforms, mountains, caves, stele, buildings and pyramid bases were used as astronomical markers. These markers were used to measure the movements of the Sun and, of course, many other celestial bodies such as Venus, the Pleiades, the Moon, etc. Now, these measurements and the position of the Sun during the year on the horizon were significant. Unlike the four seasons we have today, many of these groups, respecting the concept of duality, consider periods of dryness and rain planting and cultivation, cold and heat. These periods, which we obviously appreciate today as the heat in summer, is not the same as in winter. All this knowledge of the climate was crucial because it allowed for the planning of field preparation for planting, anticipating rain, harvest times, the migration of animals to the center of the country due to the onset of coal as another source of food, and many other factors. The lack of knowledge about the climate could lead to famines and, consequently, death. Therefore, beyond thinking that the construction of pyramid bases was a kind of wind, the reality is that it was a necessity. All of this involved mathematical and astronomical knowledge their cosmology, and knowledge of the terrain in relation to the sunrise. This moment of alignment in the center of the imaginary line was measured with mountains, stele, buildings, roads, and many other things. Obviously, what survives the most in this regard is the pyramid bases. However, if we believe that these are just a few, we are mistaken. Today, Thanks to technology and archaeoastronomy, we can recreate some of them, as has been the case with the recent 3D recreation of Tenochtitlan. It provides us with what we see here. In this case, when the sun rose between the two shrines of Tlaloc and Huitzilopochtli in Tenochtitlan, it would correspond to what we now call equinoxes. Another example of this is found in the surviving double temple in Teopanzolco, Morelos, where as seen in the image. The sun rises depending on the year on the dates of March 19, 20 or 21 and between September 22 and 23. This is an alignment of the sun and the platform. As observed in this recreation, the sun's rising would divide year into nine periods of 20 days each, following the apparent rotation of the Earth, moving towards the north. When the sun returns after September 22 or 23, it marks the dry season. Another platform in Morelos that also marks the equinoxial moments is in Xochicalco, In its main plaza, the sun similarly rises in the middle of the platform. Now, let's turn to the Maya, where in the so-called House of the Dolls, during the equinoxes, the sun illuminates the entrance of the building.
In Guatemala, the same phenomenon occurs, as in Huachantún, where the sun rises from the center of the central temple. The platforms on the sides mark the solstices. There are countless constructions with three structures, where the central one would mark what we now call equinoxes and the ones on the sides mark the solstices. However, there are variations of these platforms that mark the equinox without the sun having to rise behind them. The clearest examples are the platforms of Chichen Itza and Mayapan. These nearly identical buildings give us the so-called descent of Kukulkan, precisely marking the balance between day and night. Mayan arches also mark this. As seen in Oskintog, where this moment signifies the equinoxes. Mayan stili such as the one in Koba show that during the equinoxes the sun rises behind the steel. Now, let's go to Tlaxcala. Where in Xochitecatl the sun is seen passing through this frame. In Iguazio, Michoacán, these two twin platforms point to the sunrise. And in the east, Facing them, we have two small mountains that perhaps were imitated by the platforms, where in the middle of the two small mountains the sun would rise. In the end, practically every settlement would have a structure designed to measure this phenomena. Obviously, some were destroyed by time, war or other phenomena or because many are still awaiting discovery and study. But one thing is certain. You can see that they literally build entire cities based on this phenomenon. Their function has nothing to do with raising their hands to absorb energy. In reality, these measurements and the entire infrastructure created around them were part of their beliefs. These phenomena were measured with countless objects created by humans and natural objects, which were an important part of their lives. Not just a passing trend as it often happens today. All of this shows their deep connection with their environment, their fascination with the sun, the other celestial bodies, and their need to measure these events throughout the year.